Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Gregory and this is your Oh Shit Guide to Vectorworks Spotlight, the only tutorial I'll use the night before due date. The purpose of this tutorial is to give a quick overview or refresher on the uses and tools in Vectorworks Spotlight. In this tutorial we'll be talking about page layout, manipulating and building in CAD, the specifics of Spotlight including adding and editing luminaries, the production of paperwork, and then file settings. Let's begin. Here we are at a generic Vectorworks plot. This particular plot is of the Rothlock Performance Hall in Woodside Priory School in Portola Valley, California, drafted by Matthew Roth. In this Vectorworks space, we have four main toolboxes. The first one is the actual toolbox. This is the selector cursor. That means that you can select various pieces. And the shortcut for that is the keyboard letter X. The next is the hand that moves it around. Keyboard shortcut for that is the letter H. This rotation guide allows you to move through the 3D world on your plot. The command for that is Shift C, and an easier way to get out of that instead of trying to find your center is to go over to this thing that says Custom View, click on it, and say Top Plan. That just gives you a straight down view of your stage. From here you can also say that you want to go from the right side. We're going to stay in Top Plan for right now. Our next tool window is the Tool Set window. This shows you the different types of tools you can use and then different pockets that you can keep them in. For example, right now we're in the Lighting Pocket. So you see Instrument Insertion Tool that will help you put actual luminaries into your plot. Then you can draw trusses, curved trusses, you can put in lighting positions, soft goods, focus points, and all these. There are various other tool cases, but the lighting one is the one that we'll use the most. The two most important ones are the Object Info Palette and the Resource Browser. The Object Info Palette, achieved by getting Command-I to view or unview it, it shows you all of the different classes, layers that you're in, and once you're in something, you can edit it. The Resource Browser shows you all your different files, and it allows you to get different instruments or fixtures or accessories and other items that you can add into your plot. You can hide or view your resource browser by hitting Command R. If you're on a laptop, you can use the two finger slider on the trackpad to zoom in and out. If you're not, you can use the center wheel to track in and out. Additionally, to move around the 3D world, if you use single arrow keys, for example, right, 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 then you can move around your space. But this is a very coarse adjustment. Before you start building a CAD, it's often helpful to get rid of some of the things cluttering your screen. So to do that, we're going to go to the Classes page up here, and we're just going to hide some of them. So for example, Drapery. We don't need Drapery. Drapery, Stage Blacks. We don't need that. So here we have everything that can get in the way of our stage out of the way. So now we're trying to make a set design. So we're going to make a simple box set. To do this, we're going to start out with a guide. I've already created a simple guide. The best way to make walls is by using the Wall tool, which is found under the Building and Shell pocket of your tool set which looks like a home. When clicked, you find many fun tools, and the top one is labeled Wall. When you click on the wall, then we just start from an edge, and it'll track exactly which angle we're going, and then double click to get out. We're going to change the thickness to 2 feet 6 inches, and the height, we're going to change to 12 feet, and now if we go into our front view, we'll see how now we have multiple wall sections. Now that we have our set, then we're going to go ahead and reactivate all of our drapes and lighting equipment. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to lay out our focus points. Right now we have our basic focus points, 1 through 12, and that just comes with the plot, with the, with the theater. But we're not going to use them. So we're going to go back into our class layer, and we're going to find where it says focus points. We're going to turn those off, and we're going to go into Layers, we're going to say New Layer, Focus Points 2. There we see it, now it's the active layer, which means that anything that we add, it's going to go into that layer. So we're going to select OK, and then we're going to find our Focus Point tool. What a Focus Point is, is a place that you can put on the stage deck, where then when you hang lights, you can say, point this light at this Focus Point, and the software will understand that. So we're going to start with, let's say, this area. We're going to say this is going to be stage right apron. Notice how it puts it in and it writes in stage right apron on it. Now we're going to go down here. We're going to go A. We're going to go center 
B, which it already types in. It's cool. It's smart. C. Now we're going to go to our selection tool. We're going to select these three focus points. We're going to go to modify, align, align distribute. And we're going to say that we're going to align them on that way and say center. So that means that they're just going to align themselves. So now they're all underneath this pipe. So we're going to do the same with the rest of these. So now that we have our focus points, we need to add in fixtures. We're in the focus points layer, so we want to get out of that, and we want to add in a new layer, luminaries. We're going to make it active, which means that anything we add to the plot will go into that. So to get our fixtures, we're going to go to our resource browser. We're going to go into files. We're going to get out of our open file, and we're going to go into Vectorworks libraries. In here, we're going to try to find ETC lighting. We're going to open it and it'll give us a list of all of ETC's fixtures. We're going to find an ETC source for 36 degree. Here it is. When we double click on this, our instrument insertion tool lights up. And that says that now that is our active symbol. We're going to start adding fixtures. So let's start with focus point B. We'll go down to the truss. We're going to go about 45 degrees out and we're going to click on the truss. The first click places the, the instrument. The second click determines rotation. So we're going to point it towards focus point B. And then we're going to put another one about on the other side. We're going to point it towards B as well. So we can see both of our fixtures here. And if we use the selection tool, X, to select both of these, then we can see in the object info palette that they're both at 19 feet 8 inches on the front of house truss, which is exactly where we want them to be. From here, we're going to scroll down to where we're going to find focus. We're going to type in capital B, because that is what our focus point is labeled here. Now we're going to scroll up a little bit on the object info palette to where we see draw beam. We're going to click on that check mark. We'll see that that shows exactly where the light path will fall on these two fixtures, right around B. That's the important use of focus points. When you get into a view like this, and we'll see right where the two fixtures are aimed at. We're going to go back to top plan, and we're going to unselect draw beam. Following the canvas method, we're going to go up on our resource browser to etc source for par, and we'll find a narrow spot. We're going to hang it on this pipe here. We're going to verify that it's on behind the speakers on that focus point. And we're going to go down to focus, and we're going to type in B again. Let's draw the beam, and we can see that's exactly where it's going to go. In this view, you can see the difference between the field angle and the beam angle. So, altogether, this is the amount of light that those three fixtures would put out. When you're doing your plot, the next step is to go through your design and add in fixtures for every focus point. So I've gone ahead and added in fixtures for the first A, B, and C focus areas. I've added two front lights per area and a single down light. We can immediately see that it's hard to tell which fixture is pointed where. For example, this fixture here, we can sort of see that it's focused towards focus point A. And also, since I told you we only are focusing A, B, and C, we can see that it's not focused towards focus point D. But in a more complex plot, that would be harder. So what we're going to do is we're going to put together a label legend to help us identify which instruments are doing what. So we're going to go up to Spotlight. Label Legend, Label Legend Manager. We're going to add a new one. We're going to call this Normal. And we're going to put in Unit Number, Color, Channel, and further down, Focus. We're going to choose an instrument. And we're going to give it an ETC source for body and say OK. We're going to click on Edit Layout. When we see our fixture, we're going to grab unit number, and I'm going to try to put it right before the end cap. We're going to put color by the barrel and focus just inside of that. Channel, I'm going to put at the very back of the fixture. You can add in gobos or any other label to this fixture as well. We're going to hit exit symbol, and then we're going to go through and click on all the symbols that I have made. We're going back to spotlight, label legend, Assign to instrument. We're going to click on normal, hit OK. 
and we'll see that immediately we can tell that this fixture is going to A, this fixture is going to A, B, and so on. Selecting our truss, we can see that I have it auto-numbered, starting at number 1 and incrementing by 1, going right to left. If we right-click on the truss and say, Refresh Instruments, if we zoom in onto one fixture, we can see that this is labeled 1 in the unit number. And if we go along the truss, it's labeled 2, 3, and so on. We can see this better on the below cloud pipe, where we can see 1, 2, and 3. But now let's start talking about channeling. Vectorworks makes channeling your fixtures incredibly easy. So we're going to go up to Spotlight and hit Number Instruments. For the field name, we're going to put it in Channel. We're going to make sure the start number is at 1 and increment by 1. I'm going to say OK. It tells us to select the instruments in the order we wish to number them, and then click an empty space to end the numbering. We're going to go Focus Point A, Stage Right, Front Light. Focus Point B, Stage Right. Immediately when we click in blank space, we can see that it adds in the channel numbers, right behind the fixture where we put on our label legend. We also see that we forgot this light. So we're going to select it. It'll be channel 10. And we're going to go into the object info palette, find channel, and type in 10, enter. Immediately, that updates it. For gels, let's make all of our stage right front lights an R65. So we're going to select them, and then we're going to go into the object info palette, and for color, type in R65, enter. We'll notice that that immediately appears where we put, put it on the label legend. Additionally, on our object info palette, we're going to hit edit, which opens this new window. And we can see under color, it says R65, but it also gives us the exact color that R65 is. If we change that to any other number, let's say R382, Congo blue. Immediately, you see that this changes to an almost black, because it's so blue. We're going to change it back to R65, and then we're going to do the same thing for the other instruments. So now we want to add an accessory into our plot. To make this very easy to see, we're going to add in an ETC source for 5 degree. We're going to go back into our resource browser, under Vectorworks Libraries, Lighting, Accessories, Open, and then let's put in an iris in. So we're going to double click on the iris, and now we want to make sure that we have our accessory insertion tool added. The first click for our iris will be where we want it, so we're going to put it in the barrel right here. The second click is rotation, which doesn't really matter for an iris. And the third click is association. So we're going to associate it to this 5 degree. So what this means is that if I move this light over, the iris goes with it. But what we see is that this fixture doesn't have a unit number, and it's on the truss. So we're going to right click on the truss, and we're going to say refresh instruments. And we can see that right after we refresh it, this gets the unit number 4. We're going to put this channel as 11. At this point, we have a plot, and we want to print out some paperwork. So we're going to go to Spotlight, Reports, and generate paperwork. On this, it asks us what we want in the schedule. So we're going to say we want an instrument schedule, a channel hookup, and a color schedule. We're going to go ahead and select Setup. I want the paperwork to display Focus, and so I'm going to find it in the left-hand column, and then I'm going to click the button Move. We're going to go ahead and select OK. The designer, we're going to put Desi McDesigner, the show name, Demo, and we're going to just click on date, and it's going to put in the current date. We're going to say OK, and then if we go back to our resource browser and we hit our file name, then towards the bottom of that, we'll see an instrument schedule, a channel hookup, and a color schedule. If we just double click on the instrument schedule, it adds it to the plot, which we don't want. So we're going to go Control, Open. It's going to open it in a much better format for us. And we see the position, unit number, instrument type, wattage, color, channel, dimmer, focus, and everything we asked for. If we wanted to print this, then we're going to go ahead and hit this small little arrow pointed down. We're going to go to printer setup. And we're going to say that we want it landscape. And here's the key number, 85%. We're going to hit OK. And then we're going to go back to that tab. And we're going to say print. I'm going to go ahead and make a PDF. So I'm going to save it as a PDF. And when I open it, it gets me exactly what I wanted. So now that we have a plot, we're going to try to add it in a sheet layer. So we're going to click on this button. We're going to say Sheet Layers. 
and we're going to click on new for sheet number 001 sheet title demo plot we're going to click on edit properties after creation hit ok and for page setup it depends on what you're printing it on I'll be printing it on arc e paper so I'll click on that of course if you're printing on other things then you'd say other and you type in the inches and all go and hit ok ok again and we now see our sheet we're going to go to the dims and notes and we're going to click on sheet border we're going to go up to settings and we're going to say fit to page and then click in the center we're going to click again to stop it from rotating we're going to go over to our object info palette and hit title block and we're going to move it to spotlight simple title block we're going to hit ok we're going to click on now edit title block we type in show name drawn by the date and anything else you want to put in when we zoom in we can see that all of our information is there another way to edit this is by double clicking on the title block now this is ready to add in your viewpoint. So we're going to go back and we're going to move this plot so then we can see all of it. We're now going to go up to view, create viewpoint. The viewpoint name is full plot. And we're going to say create on layer 001 demo plot. Now we see that our plot has been added to our sheet layer. But of course it's not going to fit. So we're going to go into modify, rotate, rotate left 90 degrees. We can then take our selection tool and try to move it so then as much of it can fit as possible. The whole plot can't fit and so what we're going to do is we're going to put as much of it as we want on. We don't care about this door. Going file, print, and then you would select your printer and the largest size paper it can accommodate. From here we get to the actual print page where when you select OK it will be sent to the printer. And this has been your Oh Shit Guide to Vectorworks Spotlight. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you found it useful, and good luck with whatever you're designing.